This is Animal and it's version C. This is built by a company in Zurich and we've been uh, working with for quite uh, some time now. That is a spin-off of the ETH University in Zurich. One of the main difference between working with Animal and the Spot robot is that we have uh, uh, we have access to the low-level controllers uh, in this robot. Well, for uh, for Spot, we don't have access to the locomotion controller. So this shout out to Boston Dynamics, please <laughs> make this accessible, and we can do a lot more with your hardware. So today I'll I'll, I'll tell you a bit more about uh, how we do uh, control for uh, legged locomotion. So this is uh, how we control the limbs of uh, robots with legs so that they can navigate environments that are uh, flat and beyond flat. I mean, the interesting parts are, you know, where you need to do dynamic maneuvers and sort of uh, uh, scale obstacles, jump off uh, uh, boxes and whatnot. Currently, there are, there are two sort of prevalent approaches to it. One of them is model predictive controls. And the other one that I'll focus a bit on would be reinforcement learning. Is that where you get the robot to work it out for itself? <laughs> exactly, yeah. That's the whole point. So this is MPC. MPC is kind of on the more traditional control side of the spectrum, right? You have models of your system and then you can, in essence, simulate forward your model and decide whether what your control input uh, uh, would result into and then judge whether what you're, what you're asking the robot to do is successful or not by some metric. To see how this uh, is done, let's, let's think of a, a robot system. Robot quadrupeds, this is the robot body and it's got four legs, right? This is one of the four legs without going into too much detail. Robot moves forward, let's say. Leg has three degrees of freedom. Three degrees of freedom, it means that it has three ways in which it can move, right? It has three joints that in most cases are actuated by three motors. Now, each degree of freedom is one variable that we need to control. And uh, for the entire system, if we consider a robot with uh, th four legs, three degrees of freedom per leg, then we have 12 degrees of freedom for the joints, and then we have six more degrees of freedom about where the, uh, where the base position is with respect to the world. Now we model what each joint needs to do, and one way to go about this is to model that as a polynomial. A polynomial would be a way of representing a curve, let's say, against time, and be that Q, be the position of one joint. In model predictive control, we would have a set of polynomials that uh, would orchestrate how the robot moves. And then we would look at a time horizon, let's say capital T, and then forward simulate the system, see what it does in the environment that it navigates, and then, for example, play out T, H, which is the horizon. We can loop through that and repeat that uh, multiple times. And as time flows, we sort of command the robot to do what it uh, might. And this helps us deal with uh, uh, things like sensory noise, actuation noise, uh, estimation, uh, uncertainty, and so on. Drawbacks. We need to have good models of the system, and this is uh, particularly difficult, especially if we're dealing with a system that, uh, you know, is operating in a dynamic environment, is out in the world. You have things like wear and tear of motors or of uh, feet or actuators themselves. You have vibrations from making and breaking contact. You make and break contact all the time, which is an, uh, an added complication. So this is, this is the kind of analytical approach, the sort of more control heavy approach. Now, on the other side, we have a, a sort of, I think it's fair to say, more recent development on the machine learning side of, uh, of control, where uh, we train a neural network, as everyone these days. The idea here is that this being a neural network, these are nodes, this is input and this is output. So we want to input the state of the system and get as output a, a, a vector of control inputs, be that the torques position, desired position, desired velocities and so on, that uh, accomplish a, a target that we set for the robot, for the system. In many cases, this would be being robust to external perturbations, pushes. Uh, long story short, the, the robot's not tumbling over, not falling, and stepping on where it is supposed to step. The great benefit to that is that, uh, okay, to start with, this operates in, uh, with data, right? We would learn these controllers from data. And the great benefit with that is that we can simulate examples, uh, episodes that we learn from. So we can simulate the robot moving in, a, in an environment that we control and we can collect data of the robot performance and the 
uh, the controller performance in this simulation. We can leave that run sort of overnight, let's say, or have a cluster that uh, uses uh, that for sim that can do the simulations asynchronously. And then we can use this corpus of data to learn very robust controllers. There is a complication when taking this from the simulation to the real robot. This is, this is known as the sim to real transfer problem. Uh, there are a couple of ways that uh, we, can, uh, we can work through that. One of it is double down on the machine learning approach and learn, machine, uh, and learn from data a model of how the system responds to our input. And the other approach is to actually bake that in into a, into a controller learning. So instead of learning with one particular model in simulation, we have a range of models that we uh, if, uh, think of it as a range where we can sort of have knobs for each variable of the system. Imagine having a, a model of a quadruped where we can uh, twist a knob and get longer legs or shorter legs or larger bodies. We don't change the morphology, so we would not change the degrees of freedom. We would change the, the, the variables of the simulator itself. So by adding these variants, we can make the controller robust against changes in that parameters. And these are the set of parameters that are hard to estimate from the real system and accurately approximate in the simulator. So we can make our controllers robust to variations of these parameters, which means that it can transfer to uh, a, a, a somewhat different model, which is the model that, it, it's not the model, it's the real system, right? Okay. So can we see some of this? Is that possible? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, we have one of our quadrupeds downstairs in the lab, and we can show you what the robot does in, in, in walking over uh, some of sort of our benchmark obstacles. And uh, we can also have a look at what the robot sees, how the robot, how the robot uh, models its surroundings and uh, where it decides to step and so on. So this is quadruped robot, right? This is animal version C. Its name is Coyote. It's uh, one of the robots in our lab. The research that we do here is that we're looking into machine learning approaches to legged locomotion. This is quite different from traditional approaches that use, for example, model-based control or model-predictive control. There is a kind of uh, convergence in the fields at the moment. We, we are working and we're seeing a lot of approaches that combine model-predictive controllers and, and learned aspects to these controllers. Now, uh, Sid here is going to demonstrate our RL-based learning controller, right? This is a controller that has been trained uh, in simulation having uh, a set of examples shown to a neural network that learns to control the system. And after having it trained, then we can run it on the robot and evaluate its performance. So you've got a projection there that's kind of similar to where we're standing, isn't it? So what's going on there? Exactly. So we can, the, these are the uh, LiDAR returns from the LiDAR sensor that's there on the back of the robot. And then on the robot, there's uh, four depth sensors that are uh, distributed around the body. And this is the estimate of the system of how the ground looks around its feet. And with that, the controller can decide where to place its, uh, its legs. This is an estimate, so there's still, the robot can still stumble and sort of uh, uh, place feet at uh, the uh, sort of a, a position where it so can sleep. Sort of feel its way, almost. Yeah. The goal here is to have a controller that is also robust to slipping. That plank could be wet, it could be slippery. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. or, or stumbling and so on. So this is Animal and it's version C. This is built by a, uh, a company in Zurich uh, that builds robots and we've been uh, working with for quite, quite uh, some time now. That is a spin-off of the ETH University in Zurich. We talked about different methods of learning upstairs, the reinforcement learning or the model bay. Where does that fit in with doing that then? Is that then... You've not got a static kind of uh, equation that you plug all those numbers into. It works differently, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. So this is this is uh, uh, this a neural network that then online receives uh, perception information from the joints and the torque sensors and the uh, vision and depth sensors, and then decides where to place feet and how to orchestrate the motion of uh, all the actuators in order to be able to coordinate the system into walking over things and you know, going up flights of steps and going down flights of steps and so on. And so is it 
learning as it goes or is, it, is that then a, a, it's already done the learning and then you've applying that to this? Yes, uh, in this particular controller this is the learning has been done and uh, it's not learning as it goes but we're currently looking into approaches that we can uh, we can distill some of the experience the online experience of the of the robot and see how we can uh, incorporate that into into a sort of uh, on like ongoing learning system All right, so this is the signature here. What if we do take this and we decrypt it with the public key? Because remember, they, they reverse one another. And then we can sort of work Change their location. They can start gathering more information. So by moving, you actually introduce uncertainty into the motion.